Hey guys, welcome back to Mouse Room Gaming Studios. I'm Craig. And I'm Connor. And today we're going over the problem child, the carrying support, the Tyranid Codex, that is the, the Tyranid Hive Guard. Well, the Tyranid Codex. Yeah. <laughs> it is the, uh, it is right now the backbone of every Tyranid army, yeah. competitively yep. or not. And we're gonna go through a deep dive. We haven't actually done a deep dive on them yet in the whole mm. channel history. True. So we're gonna do it today, and then at the end of the video, we're gonna go through a discussion on how we think we need to, obviously we're not gonna change it, but GW could change it. They've got the new balance data slate, so maybe some options for there, which aren't drastic, but enough to sort of balance out the damage that these guys can do. Right. Maybe if we get enough traction on this video, GW could, you know, take notes, maybe, you know, something. So very small chance, but it's possible. It's a hope. Yeah. So before we dive into it, please like and subscribe. Stay up to date on all of our content, Tiernit and other faction related. We also do battle reports and just fun uh, community videos. And if you do want to support our channel and support the growth of this, do consider becoming a member. You get exclusive videos and access to our Discord channel along with other, other perks you can check out. Now, with all that out of the way, let's roll into this video. So today in our overview, like I said, this is a standard, mostly standard deep dive video that we are doing. So we will go over the data sheet for the Hive Guard. They do have two options. So we will cover those, mm -hmm. the commonly used Impaler Cannon and the less used, but have some potential in the Shock Cannon. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over some adaptive physiologies and the single stratagem you need to know with these guys. We will then touch on, now that we have them, Synaptic Link buffs because Hive Guard can take advantage of a wide variety of those. We'll go over the play style of the Hive Guard. It's not, you know, too uh, drastic or anything, but we'll cover it because yeah. there are some things. Mm -hmm. Then we will go into our conclusion about how to balance these a little bit more and the issues that come with balancing the Hive Guard. And we'll wrap it all up in a conclusion at the end of this video. Cool. So let's dive into the data sheet. So Hive Guard, you can take them in units of three to six. They are 35 points base. They have a movement of five inches. Weapon skill 4, blitz skill 3 plus, mm. strength 4, toughness 5, 3 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 7, and a 4 up save. You know, I'd, I've never known their profile because all I really need to know is their toughness and ballistic skill. And the ballistic skill, yep. Hmm. If they do get into combat, you know, depends on what they're up against, but they can, you know, claw their way out potentially. Yeah. Uh, so they have two, two gun options. They have the Impaler Cannon, which is the one everybody really uses, a 36 inch range, heavy two, strength eight, AP minus two, D3 damage. And you do not gain the benefit of for saving throws with cover, meaning we ignore light cover, but we do not ignore dense cover. Mm -hmm. And we ignore line of sight with those. So very powerful, a little swinging with the D3 damage. We have some ways around it, uh, but a very, very good all around purpose weapon 10 points to upgrade 10 points it. extra so 45 points a piece with this hmm. now we have the much less used but has some potential the shot cannon is 24 inch range it is a, an assault d3 damage gun so we'll swing on how many shots but averages to a person hmm. you have strength 7 ap minus 1 d3 damage again and this is a blast weapon if you go up against larger units with it. Mm -hmm. And it's got a pretty good special rule that goes along. If this is a vehicle that you're targeting, a wound rule four plus, the target suffers a mortal wound in addition to the normal damage. And if the wound rule is a six plus, it is D3 mortal wounds in addition to the normal damage. Hmm. So good. If you're going up against vehicles, it is a different way to kill them. Yeah, I didn't realize that the ignores visible, like ignores line of sight as a part of the gun, part the of impaler the gun. cannon. Yep. I thought that was built into the hive guard. You know, because it's, I mean, the shot cannon is relatively new. It used to be, that was the way the hive guard were. It was the impaler cannon, but really uh, it's with the impaler cannon, if I'm not mistaken, the ammunition is living. Yeah. So it's the ammunition of the impaler cannon mm. that, that's why the hive guard is blind. Cause he just shoots with help of the, wow, the hive mind yeah and then the little they you know, fly around or? the impaler or whatever you want to call it yeah. goes and does his thing 
Huh. Which is why it ignores line of sight. It's very interesting. Shot cannon is a little bit more different. It's a, you know, point shoot. Yeah. More standard weapon. Okay. So this unit can take a toxin sacs and adrenal glands. Don't ever do it. I don't know why these guys can take it and some other units like Raveners can't take toxin sacs and adrenal glands. So Raveners can't? No, sadly. Seems weird. But uh, yeah, so that's weird. But yeah, don't ever take them because it's not worth it unless you're doing some weird stuff. But uh, yeah, no. Okay. So that's the that's the data sheet. Sure. Now we'll go to the adaptive physiologies and stratagems. There are two adaptive physiologies you could consider. Both of them have their pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Adaptive physiology number one, enhanced resistance is the standard ignore AP minus one and two. So it makes that four up armor save a little more durable. Yeah. And the nice thing about this is that most other Ignore line of sight weapon is or weaponry is all AP minus one or two. So if yeah. you get into a situation where you're ignore line of sight on ignore line of sight, this will allow you to at least maintain your four up save against things like uh, some of the Imperial Guard weapons and the sisters. Uh, Exorcist. Exorcist. Yeah. If you pay the CP, I think they're only AP minus two. So you will keep your save on this. Okay. It does pair well with Jormungandr, because uh, Jormungandr, if you stand still, you gain light, or if you only move or stand still, you gain light cover. So now it's a three up, ignoring AP minus one and two. Cool. Really adds the durability, but then again, in my opinion, unless you're going up against the list that has ignore line of sight, these guys shouldn't be getting shot to begin with. Right. Well, yeah, let's, I have a point, but we'll go over the okay. next one. And the next one is same thing, similar thing. Dermic, or dynamic camouflage is you get plus two to your save if you have light cover. Cool. So if you pair this with Jormungandr again, you are sitting at a two up, two up save. Wow, cool. You, but you do not ignore AP minus one and two. So right. if they do have an AP two, you're back to a four up. And, it's, uh, and it doesn't off. help in close combat. Right. Again, you hopefully shouldn't be getting into close combat with them. Right, and I would say you hopefully don't need the adaptive physiology to be on your hive guard. I or you don't want that I would say I see a lot of people taking enhanced resistance on the hive guard really but I just I don't think it's worth it now I, I like could see it if you put it on the shot cannons and you're kind of using them as like a forward aggressive unit I can see it I guess I'm I when I say hive guard I think the impaler, impaler cannon, cannon. Yeah. yep because right. I've, I've never used the shot cannons no. against you even though they would be good against my grenades it would be good it'd be well you got five up to normal mortal wounds so they'd be so uh, so yeah i'd stick with the regular impaler cannons yeah because they do a lot of work you do not uh reduce damage which is great no so yeah those are two again i don't think they're worth it unless you're playing the shot cannons like a forward aggressive type unit yeah I'd rather just keep them out of touch of your opponent's weapons and if they have them well so be it i guess maybe I'll say if you're playing a smaller game on like the half board, yeah, you know, like a thousand true. points, and you can't hide them as well. That could, yeah, that then, could, that then could maybe work. do that. So they have one useful stratagem. And there's a few technically they can take advantage of, but the only one that really matters mm -hmm. is single-minded annihilation mm -hmm. for two CP at the end of the shooting phase. Any infantry unit which have guard are may shoot again. Probably. One of the, I mean, best stratagems in the Tyranid book. One of the best stratagems in the game. In the game, I was going to say, yes. too. Yeah. The only other army who has advantage to anything like this are the Emperor's Children have almost the exact same stratagem. To shoot again? Yeah, with an infantry. Well, I don't know if it's even with infantry. Maybe it might be. Maybe just noise marines or something? Yeah, at least noise marines, but I think the uh, the big scary obliterators can do it, too. Cool. It's their infantry. Yeah. I didn't know that. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's it. Nothing you really need to know about. You basically just pick the unit that has all the buffs on it and just shoot it again. Isn't there one thing that uh, you don't, you shoot it, it's two separate phases, right? Like two separate shots. Yeah, so you don't, yeah, because you, the way it works is at the end of the shooting phase you declare it. So you can shoot once and then at the end of the shooting phase, once everything else is shot, you can shoot again. It doesn't have to be the same target or anything like that. Which is nice because is you can try to kill some other stuff and see what you kill and then or if your opponent plays a defensive strategy you right. can just ignore your go with it and then the next time you can shoot something else right yes very good mm -hmm. uh now we have synaptic link buffs again the hive guard can take advantage of m most of them mm. to a great extent but these four are the ones you'll want to consider every game if you want to really buff your hive guard yeah this first one was the first one Craig, I think you got really excited about. Bioweapon Bond from the Tyranid Warriors. 
It's a plus one to hit. Plus one to hit. That is horrifying. Taking your hive guard to twos now. So yeah. that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, weapon gestation from the Turvagon. Gives reroll wound rolls of one and two. That is basically tailor built for hive guard. I mean, yeah. it works for other stuff too, but that's just insane. Most tanks, you're gonna be wounding on three, so the failed wound rolls. And even if you're wounding on fours, then yeah. So what, your threes aren't getting rerolled, but your ones and twos it's are. still two thirds of your, your fails that are Absolutely. going through. Absolutely, yep. And next we have the Synaptic Link from the Maliceptor Focal Essence. Reroll damage mm -hmm. uh, for Hive Guard who have D3 damage. That is very powerful. And it comes with an extra little bump, extra AP on sixes to wound. Which is awesome because that yeah. gets around one of the downsides of the Impaler Cannon is only AP minus two. So when right. you're going against higher toughness tanks mm -hmm. or tanks that for some reason are getting light cover, that extra six just really negates what saves they'll be getting. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much the Impaler Cannon's only downside is that, the AP too. Then the D3 damage, which you yeah. are also benefiting by taking the Malice Scepter. There you go. <laughs> Funny. And finally is feed that is it. I oh. that is the Trigon Primes. Ah, uh, Trigon Primes Synaptic Link. Yep. It lets you fall back and shoot. Mm-hmm. Wow. So wow. Theoretically, this is the only way we that's can fall back and primes. shoot. Yep. That's a weird one. It's uh, you know, yeah. I don't know what else. It's interesting. It though. is an interesting one. Yeah. The only problem with it being on a Trigon Prime is your Trigon Prime wants to be on the opposite side of the board as the Hive Guard. Always. So unless you have some crazy synaptic web mm. going all the way back to the Hive Guard. It's never, it's never gonna really work in in practice. Yeah. Is there any? Is that the only way that you can fall back? Oh, you wrote that on the slide right there. Only way. Only way. Can grant fall back and shoot okay. to the hive guard. Interesting. So out of these ones, I'd say bioweapon and bond is pretty much an auto take because it works well on all of your army in case you don't want to use it on the hive guard. Yeah. Weapon gestation is fun. And it works on other things if you have other shooting units. Maybe not worth taking a Turvagon. I don't know. I mean, if you buff up the Turvagon, then it yeah. can be a real utility to your army. Yeah. It's a bit point heavy, but you can make a Turvagon work now with Leviathan. Yeah. But I really, the Mal, it's tough. The Malice Scepter one is, is awesome. I'd say if you are running a Leviathan one, run them with Focal Essence. Mm. And put Swarm Leader rerolls on them mm. because now you're hitting on threes, rerolling ones and twos. Yeah. Where with Bioweapon Bond would be good with anything, especially Chronos, because now you're hitting on twos, rerolling the ones. You're basically guaranteeing Oof. almost all your hits to go through. Yeah. Definitely. And if you have some Biostorm, yeah. So it's a that's a good one. Any of them really work, but I would pick the my two go tos are Bioweapon Bond and Focal Essence. Cool. Play styles not too crazy, but we'll go over them. Yeah. So we talked about the Impaler Cannon. Deploy it, you deploy them behind a line of sight blocking building. Hopefully you have one in your, uh, in your deployment zone. Usually you should. You should yeah. have at least one, if mm -hmm. not two. Deploy them behind there. Try and make sure there's no weird angles your opponent can get, but uh, keep them there and don't really move them too much unless you have to. 36 yeah. inch range on the smaller boards these days is enough to touch anything but the diagonal opposite corner yeah so true. that's great uh it's good to have a unit of gaunts or rippers or something that can screen them mm -hmm. in case you're going up against an opponent who is fast that can get turn one charges off whether it be necrons have some speed the blood angels have a way to get turn one charges off relatively easy mm -hmm. harlequins can get turn one charges off so having a and any space screen that uses eliminators can mm, get turn one charges yep. off because eliminators have the weirdest gun that allows them to move after they shoot in the shooting phase. They do. Yeah, I and really you can still charge. Stuff. So it's a weird, it's a weird thing. That's weird. But uh, yeah, just something to protect from turn one charges because the last thing you want is your opponent to see that your hive guard are exposed, charge him turn one, and they're not going to shoot for the rest of the game. Pretty. It's much. a lot of points to give up that early. Yeah. Make sure you keep them near the synapse or synaptic link. You don't want them to fall out of synapse. They're not gonna, shouldn't have to worry about them failing morale, but you will have to, if they're out of instinctive behavior range, mm. they will have to shoot at the nearest target or take a minus one penalty oh. to their hit rolls. Okay. So 
But if you have synaptic links, then you shouldn't have an issue. Right. And they'll just shoot all day long. Cool. Because that's that. Now, shot cannons, yeah. they have some potential. So you play them as a more midfield objective holders. Maybe put the enhanced resistance on them mm. in a Jormungandr detachment or whatever you're doing. But we're going to go over a bit of the damage potential because I think there's some interesting stuff here. Cool. Interesting. So... Yeah, if you want to read it off. Yeah, against a Redemptor Dread, you're averaging four mortal wounds and two regular damage. That's with the minus one. That, yep, that's with the minus one. So obviously yeah. you're not going to get a ton of damage through on the regular guns. Yeah, but I mean, that's six wounds. It's still, it's still, it's still six wounds. Yeah, so that's a nice little chunk. But if you put Weapon Gestation to re-roll wounds and fish for more four pluses and fish for more sixes. Jeez. On average, you do seven mortal wounds and four damage to a Redemptor Dreadnought. Wow. And they are very, very common right now. You, yeah, most space green lists are bringing one, two, probably three of them. So yeah. thinking about how you can reliably drop a Redemptor Dreadnought is big. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is only 11 wounds and Redemptors have 13. Oh. So you will need a little extra help or maybe your rolls just go well. Right, or, yeah, above average. Above average to get that off. Now, some ways of how to get these guys into potential damage. Oof. There's a lot of ways, but the main issue with doing this, besides just walking them off the board, is you will miss out on weapon gestation because it is a command uh, phase thing. Yeah. So, it there are some requires, ways to bring them in reserves. It's just... It's also cost more points to bring them in reserves, though. Potentially, You yes. buy a pod, you spend a CP. Uh, do not have to spend the CP. Not with a pod, you don't have to spend... You have to pay for the pod, but the pod has got potential now. But to just put them in strategic reserve. Strategic reserve will cost you one CP, maybe two. Same thing with the lictor. You have to pay for the lictor, the, the strat. Yep. Yeah. And the lictor can pop in, and then they can pop in... Again, you can't mm. take advantage of the weapon gestation, which I think is the best way to run with the shot cannons. Yeah. Now, th this is against Redemptor Dreadnought, which is going to be one of your hardest vehicles to kill because of the reducing damage. Now, against Eldar E vehicles, Dark Eldar, Eldar Harlequin vehicles. They will, yeah, they'll do great against those ones. They're already wounding on threes. They'll wound them better on threes. Wow. And they'll do the mortal wounds. And yeah. I don't... Do the Dark Elder vehicles get that six up to feel no pain? Or is it just the infantry? I don't think the vehicles have a six up. No. So I think power from pain is for not vehicles. Non vehicles. Yeah. So yeah. And then if you want, again, uh, uh, single mount annihilation, you mm -hmm. double that. So that's 14 mortal wounds and eight damage. So that will kill hmm. whatever it touches. It is putting a lot into one squad. It is putting a lot, but you do that all, anyway with Hive Guard with Impaler Cannon. That is so, so true, yeah. Anyway, it's a different way to do them. They are uh, bigger models holding mm -hmm. the objective, and your opponent will want to charge them, but it just, it's a way to use the shot cannons. Yeah, there is a use. There's a use out there, yeah. That's what we're getting at. Now, there's two Hive Fleets to consider if you want to maximize your Hive Guard. The first one is Leviathan because obviously you get advantage of Swarm Leader rerolls. And all this other new which, stuff. And all the other new stuff, but the Swarm Leader rerolls is the most consistent way. Reroll all hit rolls is perfect. Yeah. Uh, another way you could do it is with Kronos, and that is to reroll hit rolls of one is standing stationary. Won't be great for the shot cannons, but for the Impaler cannons, they're ideally not moving. Mm. So without any upgrades or any synaptic links, they're hitting on threes, rerolling ones, which is great. Scary. Very scary. Yeah. So those are the play styles. Now we'll talk over. This is the real meat here. The, the real, the real meat, because the hive yeah. guard, the deep dive is the deep dive. There's not too much to it. You already know what they do, most likely, if you yeah. play tyrannids. But now we have the issue of how to balance the hive guard. So currently, if you guys are new to tyrannids, or you maybe you don't play tyrannids, and you're just getting some information on the hive guard. Yeah. Uh, currently, uh, they are carrying the tyrannids all the way up to the top. I would say second tier of codexes. Just pretty impressive, yeah. considering... Like like we've said in past old. videos, I think Dark Eldar and Grey Knights are at the top right now. When you're watching, when this video is dated. When this video is in December 
2021. 2021, yeah. so before chapter proof changes. Before uh, Dread Knights got nerfed. Hope, I'm just maybe, guessing. Yeah. <laughs> before that, yeah. it's Dark Eldar and Grey Knights. And after that, it's, you know, Admech, uh, Tyranids, I think, right now. You can argue. Uh, Death Guard are in there. You could put maybe. Black Templars in there. Yes. And Sisters? Sisters could go in there. Mm -hmm. Most of the ninth edition. I mean, you could put, argue Space Marines too, but just... Yeah, some yeah. of them. So that's where they are. But the only reason Tyrants are up there is because of the sheer damage the Hive Guard can do. The Synaptic Links yeah. take the Hive Guard from a, a good level Great unit. to an absolutely oppressive level. Yeah. Rerolling damage, getting an extra AP, rerolling your wounds, hitting better. Yeah. Full rerolls with Swarm Leader reroll, not Synaptic Link, but still... All those new buffs just go right into the hive guard better than any other unit in the codex. It just yeah. Well, let's keep going. And then before. and then on top of it, we have one of the best strategies in the game in single-minded annihilation. Which, if you go first, just to put into perspective how oppressive it is. So hive guard unit with impaler cannons, 270 points. Mm. Let's say you go first and you dump synaptic links on them. You dump swarm leader rerolls on them. Mm -hmm. Then you pay this two CP you are getting essentially an extra buffed 270 points. So turn Oof. one, if you go first, you're basically playing with, you could say a 2,300 point shooting list against a 2,000 point list. And your opponent cannot hide from them. And they ignore line of sight, yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's the it's problem just so, it's too strong. that makes them so good is that, especially if they go first, yeah. it's rough for your opponent they just delete things and they for two cp you have a f a free extra unit and the more buffs you stack on them the more the two cp becomes worth it exactly. so it's yep. not even like you're losing much by spending that no. two cp you're when, actually gaining stuff. when i play or build a competitive tier list yeah. with this i assume four to six of my cp is going into single my annihilation i don't want it to it necessarily to, i want to try all the other stuff but Give me the best chance, yeah. at least two, if not four. And if they're still around for me to do it a third time, then yeah. my opponent's probably in a rough spot. Yeah. So that's it. So an issue, or the issue, is that I believe that there is a very fine line between nerfing the Hive Guard and taking the Tyranid Codex from second tier all the way down to bottom tier in yeah. terms of Codex potential. Yeah. Because the, they rely on this so much, and a lot of the other units are still eighth edition profiles. They just they just can't compete. And it's really the hive guard that are the only things that do compete. And not only are the eighth edition profiles, but tier units are just weird. Like it's a hard army to balance because mm -hmm. it's not it's not really core stuff. Nope. It's just like a bunch of different sized bugs. alien bugs doing their thing. So it yeah, I agree. It's gonna be tough. Now, like we said, Chapter Approved 2022 is hopefully coming out in a month yeah. from the time this is filming. And that gives us new mission, primary and secondaries mm -hmm. are changing. That gives us new point costs. Mm. So hopefully some not so great tiered units, Raveners, cough, cough, Raveners, um, those get point decreases yes. and probably the Hive Guard are going to get a point increase. Yeah. And we'll see. We will definitely, when that time comes, we're going to do, I have plans to do, you know, deep dive on the new chapter approved 2022. We'll mm -hmm. do an overview. Oh, yeah. We'll see how it affects the Tyranids, how it affects maybe the Grey Knights or other armies specifically. Yes. And then I also plan to do a, after we die, play a little bit with the new points and everything, I want to do a state of the Tyranids. Mm. in terms of where they are now, whether that's a good, bad, ugly video yeah. or a updated tier ranking to our last one. Okay. So we'll go into all that, but right now, what are our options with Hive Guard? How can we make them normal? These are some of the things I have included. I've heard comments from other people. I may have taken inspiration from them, but so first thing, mm. easiest one, Hive Guard cannot use single-minded annihilation. That'd be huge. Simple as that. Say, just put a, a stipulation in the balance data slate that says Hive Guard cannot use this. Yeah. Let us let us do it with our Devil Gaunt so we can pump out 180 or 200 plus shots. I feel like that. I mean, that alone would help it so much. That would help a lot. That would negate that whole fact that you're p playing somebody with 300 extra points turn yeah, one. Yeah. Right. So that's that. Next thing, uh, increase. 
five points increase not to the shock cannons, to yeah, the impaler yeah. cannons. I'll change that for you guys. Mm -hmm. Five point increase to the impaler cannons. Keep the shock cannons where they are because they're not not competitive. I mean, no. you can make them work, absolutely, mm -hmm. but put the hive guard back up to 50 points. I five think points. that's where they were in oh, yeah. 2019. Oh. And then chap in part of 2020, the chapter approved dropped them down five points. And then a max squad of six would be 300 points? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, then the other option Seems is... Fair. Don't obviously don't do all of these. These are just you know things they could choose. Yeah. Please don't do all of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, limit the number of hive guard. Either do hmm. three man units only. Wow. Which means it, you're not as uh, likely to put the two CP into them. You're not as likely to put the synaptic links yeah. into them. Make yeah. them so they're a support unit. You can pop off three of them. Three hive guard shooting. It's gonna do damage. Yeah. But it's not gonna annihilate an entire enemy unit maybe you can mm. kill a rhino with it and something like which they you know they should be able to what do they're supposed to do yeah but uh, do something like that mm. honestly in the future if they went to max three per unit and then made them like flat damage three two shots less shots that's six no still still oh, same amount of shots it's shots. six it's i mean technically it's 18 wound potential but i mean that would be a it's more buff, consistent I don't know, but you could limit them to damage. three, get rid of single mind annihilation yeah. and get rid of um, six man units. That's, I just, yeah. the two, the damage two is, or D3 is just rough against certain tanks. Even just giving them, da well, damage two is still a problem. I guess you're thinking about dreads. Yeah. Dread or nuts. make them do mortal wounds or something so they ignore that. That would be mean. But anyway, um, so mm. that's what I'm saying. Either do three man units or maybe limit it to a max of 12 models per army. So I mean, that's still two, two max squads, right? Two, yes, it's still ma two max squads, but there are people bringing 18 of these. Well, yeah, that's, that's pushing it like way too far yeah. for me at least. But, <laughs> yeah. So those, my favorite out of all of these is the limit them to three man squads. Yeah. I think it will provide... Negates the buffs effectiveness as well. It does. Yeah. Bringing a unit of three, every army will do it. It's not going to consume be... a large portion of your codex, and it'll just be some simple fire support. Yeah, I wonder how many would get ran, because they're elites, right? Mm -hmm. I wonder how many people would end up running if they were limited to three. Would they take, like, three squads of three? Maybe. We have a lot of now elites. It's, it, it's a different thing now. It not, is. There's not as big of a unit. Maybe three squads of three, two squads of three. Huh. That would be a, a, That would change a lot. Yeah. Just that one that, change. That's my biggest thing. Or at least say, but don't do, um, don't limit them to three man units and take away single mind annihilation because mm -hmm. a three man unit is might want to use it mm -hmm. and that's half as oppressive as it was before. Much more uh, costly for the Tyranid player. Yes. So that's, I think that's where I where I stand. I would like yeah. to limit the units. If they don't do that, uh, get rid of single mind annihilation mm -hmm. and then you know, increase them, the impaler cans back up five points. Those all seem like decent stuff to me. The only downside to decreasing the unit to a max of three mm. is you really make the shot cannons useless because the shot cannons need a big squad to oh. do some consistent damage. Right. But... That's not really the biggest issue right now, is it? No, I would love to try out the shot cannons. Yeah. Uh, but uh, right now, as it stands, the yeah, that cannon is godly. That's how I put it. Yeah. So let's. Or there's one more. Mm. Just make the rest of the codex better, so we don't have to spam <laughs> hive guard. <laughs> Please, GW. I know it's going to be like True. a year, but do that one. Maybe give them. <laughs> maybe give the hive guard one of those nerfs. Yeah. And then give make the tier dance a good book. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in a conclusion, since Warzone Octarius, the unit went from oppressive, no, from good to oppressive and at a drastic rate. Maybe even a word above oppressive, whatever that word whatever is. Whatever is above that. <laughs> Being able to give full reroll to hit potential, full reroll to wound potential, and full reroll on the damage potential. Now, you can't do all of them, but you could do two of those. Right. Is, uh, is a lot. More than enough. More than enough, mm -hmm. which, you know, as a Tyrion player, we like. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so Hiveguard make the Tyrion Codex Elite. Like we said, if it wasn't for Hiveguard, we would be like a tier 
four or three codex. Maybe just a step above Tau and Guard right now. Oh, we'd be a step above. Well, it's true. It'd be I close. It'd, yeah. It'd be close without a Hive Guard. Uh, so it's a tricky way to, to balance them because obviously the, the Hive Guard carry us, mm -hmm. bring us up there. But we want to keep the state of 40k balanced, but be healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be a case of, oh, there's a Tyrion player. He's got Hive Guard. I mean, what do you do? I hate playing this game now. Yeah, you know, I I don't yeah. want that. I want yeah. the I want the game to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I want to keep growing. I want to. And I, to be completely honest, my tournament list that I last brought, you guys saw it. Very shooty. Very 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 shooty with some combat elements. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It does the damage, but it's not as fun to play as a combat list. You've always liked your combat list. I would much rather. Tyranids be way better at combat and have the Hive Guard be supporting shooting than Tyranids be a shooty army with yeah. some supporting combat. Right. But uh, we'll see what happens with the rest of the Codex. Hopefully Hive Guard don't get hit so bad that we drop off the face of the competitive scene. We yeah. will have to resort to some of our old lists, but as more and more new Codexes come out, it's going to be tough we're just going to be able to compete against less and less yeah and uh it looks like it's gonna be a while till we get new rules we do have i saw a leak rumor something came out today there is a new army of renown for the tyranids coming in the white dwarf i wonder what that is it's i think it involves monsters i think it's something for carnifexes so oh wow stay tuned to the channel we cool. will cover that once we figure it out but it's uh that, that could be cool we'll definitely play some games with that and let the hive guards sit on the shelf for a bit because while i they need to rest they they, they yeah so tired they're very tired yeah. with all that shooting they've done <laughs> yeah so that's it for this video on the hive guard standard deep dive plus a little bit of rambling what do you guys think Put down in the comments what of these changes that we put up there. Let's go back to it just so. Uh, Hiveguard being not able to use single-minded annihilation. Five-point increase to impaler cannons or the three-man unit limit. Of those three, yeah. which ones do you guys think is the better one? Or do you have another option in, in mind that you think would solve it? But let's try and have this video get some traction. Maybe... Uh, as much as I don't want to nerf the Tyranids, maybe GW and other people get this traction going and see if we can put, uh, put Hiveguard in a, a healthier place. It's a complicated issue, so definitely leave comments on what you guys think. Yeah, so thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time here at Maelstrom Gaming Studios. Thanks, guys.